I think being a good listener is is really a large part of oh, sure. what I do. Yeah. Um, because people do have great concepts and ideas, and they just don't know how to Im- implement them sometimes. Mm-hmm. Hello and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm Sarah Scully and I'm here today with Pauline Van Gulden. Pauline, thanks for coming and joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Sure. Um, so Pauline is a um, professional seamstress and I've been working with her on a secret project um, which we'll reveal. Um, we might actually talk about it a little bit today. Um, but uh, I wanted to interview her about her sewing practice. She's um, got some years of experience and wanted to find out more about what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, so how did you first get started in sewing? Was that something you grew up with? Yes, I did. Um, I, I've been sewing all my life, really, mm-hmm. if I think about it. And uh, I got sparked to really turn it into a business when my children were young. And mm-hmm. I wanted to stay home and raise them. And yep. I had all these sewing skills, so that's mm-hmm. how I began. Okay. Yeah, what kinds of things were you sewing as a as a child? Were you, was your family into quilting, or how did you learn to sew? Um, my mother had an old 1940s Singer sewing machine nice. set up all the time, and yeah. she had a lot of fabric, and she really didn't love to sew, but she taught me how to sew, mm-hmm. and it was something that sparked me. Mm-hmm. And so I grew up with the sewing machine and a lot of fabric around me and great fabric shops. And mm-hmm. I used to take things and reinvent them, like m- making a pair of socks into a pair of mittens. And, oh, nice. and um, oh, when I was younger, I'd make halter tops with my friends and mm-hmm. kind of things like that. And it's just something that I've done for a long, long time and very comfortable with mm-hmm. and have learned a lot over the years. Yep. And so then when you were a young mother, you decided to stay home and have a, um, turn that into a business. Yes. Um, what kinds of things was it? Clothing or other types of items? Yep. So I, I made most of my children's clothes, Mm -hmm. um, but I also worked for a company that, uh, I did piecework for a company that made quilts and, and sold them around the country. And so I, I, I could do that from home and I learned a lot about, how quilts are put together and the patterns, the traditional patterns. And then um, that just kind of one thing flowed into another. And then I started doing drapes and Mm -hmm. curtains and uh, software goods for how, you know, home and home decor. Mm -hmm. Um, And, but I continued also to always do my own um, designs and pattern making and um, children's clothing, which then my children started designing clothing and like oh, fun. make things that they designed, which was super fun. Oh, that's neat. And they'd sit up on my my big sewing table and, mm-hmm. and design their thing and put swatches of fabric on, and that was really fun. Oh, that's neat. Like, I want pants that look yes, like this, or exactly. I want a skirt that looks like that. Exactly. Okay. And cool. so, <laughs> and, and I had lots of fabrics at the time because I started making outerwear and, mm-hmm. um, and then th- that kind of led me working with other um, companies that were doing outerwear. And mm-hmm. so I ended up being a small batch manufacturer for some companies, um, Rovers North in, in um, Westford, Vermont. Mm-hmm. Um, is a Land Rover company, and they wanted me to make their jackets and vests. Mm-hmm. And those are all in, were all in catalogs for a while. Um, so it was a great it was a great marriage of things because um, they did not want to have a huge manufacturer. They wanted to be able to be in control of the amount of colors and the colors they used and the okay. sizes. And I was able to do that for them. So um, that got me kind of into the outerwear sector. Mm-hmm. And then um, it just, uh, I've I really, I've done the gamut, you know, it's like yeah. uh, I've, at this point I've, I've sewn in so many venues that, mm-hmm. They're all kind of familiar to me. Right. Uh, one of the one of my best um, one of the my favorite things that I did was I was hired to sew the lace drapes for the Otter Creek room at the Vermont State House. Oh, nice! And they're 141 inches long. Wow! <laughs> and so it was it was a challenge and fun and an honor certainly mm-hmm. for their sesquicentennial. Mm-hmm. And um, 
and so that was a big deal and I w- I actually had my sewing machine set up in their in their Otter Creek room oh, wow. at one point because I was doing <laughs> some some um, amending and it was re- it was really fun but mm-hmm. so yeah I I guess I guess it's just a passion of mine that I am very tied to right well that makes sense I mean they say what's that phrase if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life, you know? Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, and every time I, I get away from sewing, I I have to go right back to it. So, mm-hmm. um, But I do a lot of pattern making now and, and copying of clothing for other people, their favorite piece. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I really like this jacket, and they don't make yes. it anymore. Can you make me two? Exactly. In different colors or whatever. The fabrics I want. Right. So um, I've been having so much fun with that, and some mm-hmm. of my customers now are just are, are so happy that they can have their own piece made from an old favorite right that's really really cool that's a great service yeah yeah I have some things that I, I need to talk to you about getting altered but we'll, <laughs> we'll do that off camera <laughs> that's really cool um so you uh have you were you born in Vermont no I was okay. born in Maplewood New Jersey oh okay <laughs> yeah but you've lived here for quite a while yeah I've I've lived here for Ooh, I want to say I went to college in Vermont and I never left. Mm-hmm. So I've been here for like 40 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's my home. Yeah. Where did you go to school? Johnson State College. Okay. Yeah. And then and then Oklahoma University and then University of Vermont. Uh-huh. And then I finished at Johnson State College. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Took me a while. It was a, a route. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. <laughs> my husband was on the six-year plan for his bachelor's degree. That's okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's cool. And did you ever take formal uh, training in sewing? Well, just through all the experiences I've had, I've been uh, uh, very fortunate to be able to work with some masters, and mm. and I um, particularly in the home decor world. And um, so they have been certainly my mentors and mm-hmm. my guides, and you know. A lot of it's trial and error too. Right. There's a lot of mistakes you make before you oh, come sure. up with with the perfect thing. And same with knitting. Yeah. Same with anything else. So yeah. I always <laughs> say, seam rippers your best friend. <laughs> Except when you stab yourself in the thumb with it, which exactly. is what I do when I get my sewing stuff. Exactly. Out. Yeah. So, but uh, you know, so over the years, I've had some beautiful mentors and um, very. I mean, I just, I, I am so grateful mm-hmm. for, for what I've learned from others. And, uh, I, tr- I work with many sewers now in collaboration and I, I always learn something from them. So. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's interesting. What, what are those collaborations like? Tell me about that. Well, um, it, it's very interesting. R- recently, um, I have a lot of men sewers in my life mm-hmm. and some of them called themselves seamsters <laughs> and, <laughs> which I love. Mm-hmm. And, um, and there, it's a different, I was just talking with a friend of mine who's also a sewer and he was like, I think there's kind of a scientific m- way in which men sew. And, um, and I'm finding that to be true that, um, the approach is different. Mm. So I, I, and I've learned so much from that me- more mechanical side of things, um, mm-hmm. uh, rather than the feel and the fabric and, the the feminine part of it or mm-hmm. something maybe mm-hmm. so um and and I love I love learning um through through their experiences too and um so particularly right now I'm working on some uh, men's shirts that will mm-hmm. be will be kind of um unique and it, it's nice to have that feedback and and knowledge on on the, the male perspective side of that because mm-hmm. um it's a different it's different than, than other sewing. Right. So, um, yeah, so I, I don't, it's just, I, I, I've been working with some really lovely people and mm-hmm. it's been so fortunate. Yeah. Have you ever collaborated on designs with someone like sort of trading off ideas or, or melding ideas to come up with the final mm-hmm. product? Yes, exactly. Um, and it, in doing so, I find that it, it, it expands what I'm doing mm-hmm. so much. So, mm-hmm. Um, you have to kind of take your ego right out of it. Oh, sure. <laughs> you know, and be willing to say, wow, that was really interesting. I, I learned something. Right. So, um, or this idea might work in a different context, but it's not working here. Yes. It's not a reflection on me. It's just, yes. this is the project. And so to move forward, we need to 
change something. Yes, or, exactly. Or yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'm always open for learning, and um, people have some really good ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think sometimes when you put your heads together, you can come up with great ideas. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I will say Pauline's been a joy to work with because I don't know all the technical terminology, but I can just, it's, it's almost like asking a musician to come up with a tune for you. Like you have an idea in your head, but you don't play an instrument. And so you can just say, hey, what if we made this like that? Can you do that? And she can go, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need a gusset and a seam and a this and a that. Yes, <laughs> and yes. And it all works, you know. Exactly. Yeah. I think being a good listener is is really a large part of oh, sure. what I do. Yeah. Um, because people do have great concepts and ideas, and they just don't know how to Im implement them sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I can I, – I have the skills to – perform the task but uh so it's kind of right. interesting but you have to translate too from like the idea side to the yes that mechanical piece yes. like you were talking about how is this going to be work yeah. right yeah exactly. and be efficient exactly right especially if you're making a bunch of something so sure yeah um uh let's talk about the bags so um i'll put a picture um here of the bags that we've been working on this is a design that i um, and borrowing from a design I saw for like sort of a makeup case or a, um, just a toiletries bag, but I really thought it was great for a travel bag. And um, Pauline and I have been going back and forth. We've got final kind of sizes and dimensions, um, and I'm really excited about this uh, travel, travel project bag for knitters or crocheters. Um, it's going to have no hardware in contact with the yarn, which is something that I really like. You often see... Yeah. Um, things like zippers or something where the yarn can get stuck in the in the closure hardware and um, these will be debuting at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival so stay tuned for that it's pretty exciting yeah it is um, and Pauline's been really great about telling me sort of feasibility and you know how many we can expect to make um, and all of that um, how's the process been for you okay it's been really fun um i i love working with good people and good ideas so oh. it, it has been really fun and certainly. well it's been really great for me too to, to go through a couple iterations and see those ideas kind of come together mm. so it's been really great so i hope you guys will enjoy these too um what is your uh sort of current favorite thing to to sew or to work on what i would kinds of things say do you like making these days um, I would say that I'm having a really fun time making patterns and reworking people's favorite mm -hmm. ideas. And uh, I, I just, I find it so rewarding because everybody wins. And, yeah. and it's something that I just am passionate about. So, yep. um, and, and I love that people can find the fabrics they want to work with. Mm -hmm. And often there are fabrics that I love to work with too. So mm -hmm. um, that has been one of my favorite things right now. And I have quite a few people who are, that's what they're interested in there. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to go to H&M and buy the shirt off the rack. They want their own shirt. Right. Well, especially because, I mean, we talk about fast fashion and all of that. Um, you know, if you, go, if you go to a big mass produced store like that and you do buy, find something that you love, it's probably going to disintegrate in a couple of washes. I found that especially women's clothing clothing has just gotten to be such poor quality lately that in terms of the fabric, yes, um, it has no lasting power. And of course, that's the point, right? They want you to wear the shirt for the season and then throw it away and then get have to go buy more. Exactly. I love exactly. this idea of recreating your own wardrobe staples, even if you're not a master sewer being able to work with someone who can do that for you and investing in that and then having that piece, just like we do with knitting and you knit a sweater and it might take you a year, but you're going to have that sweater for 20 years. Exactly. So same and thing yeah. as And I find that also with repurposing clothing, um, mm, sure. that's another area that I'm very interested in getting, I'm getting involved with a little bit is um, remaking things into mm -hmm. other things. We, we're such a throwaway society and yep. I feel like, 
there's that favorite thing that's been sitting in your closet for 25 years, but you're never going to wear it unless it changes. Right. So, um, maybe you like the print or something, but you don't like the way that it fits you. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I've been getting into that lately and with mm -hmm. others and I, I'm finding that very rewarding. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. You talk about pattern making. Um, do you ever publish patterns for home, other home sewers? I haven't. Uh, I have shared patterns mm -hmm. that, that have been very successful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a pattern isn't 100% successful, so right. I have to remake it. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's ones that I have for private people that I just keep for them mm -hmm. so that they can... Sort of keep on file. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> um, so I ha I, I'm always willing to share a pattern if somebody likes mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. how they that came out. Mm -hmm. Um, and, but I don't, I haven't sold them to others. I just, uh, mm -hmm. I just have an accumulation of them now. Right. And I quite often pull out old patterns that mm -hmm. I've made and either rework them or reuse them. So mm -hmm. um, and they're constantly kind of in movement. Yeah. It's like your own research library. Yes. Developed over time. That exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. Great. Um, other than making me a bunch of bags for the show, what other kinds of projects do you have on your horizon for this year? What's coming up that you know? How? I don't know. I've, I've been working with several people on um, starter business projects, mm -hmm. and often the ideas are really wonderful, and they get kind of stuck in the beginning stages. Mm -hmm. So I have a few of those going now. Um, one is with a person who is making yoga meditation mats, tra mm. travel yoga meditation mats. Okay. And, um, he's also a seamster mm -hmm. and has some really great ideas. And, and just getting it from that conceptual part to mm -hmm. into a manufacturing mode where the materials are even affordable mm -hmm. it has, been, has been a little tricky. But... Mm -hmm. So I work th with people through that process. Right. Sometimes it, it is very successful, and mm -hmm. other times it's it's less successful because it's just cost prohibitive or right time prohibitive or sure a lot of a lot of people who are doing these projects are working full time, mm -hmm. and this is a side thing for them. And right. Um, so, but those I I love working collaboratively with others mm -hmm. and, and their and their great ideas. Yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, uh, thanks again. It's been great chatting with you. You're welcome. And learning more about your process and what you do. You're and, welcome. Uh, we'll have um, another preview of what we're going to be offering at Maryland Sheep and Wool. I will. I'll do a separate video for that. Um, but tune in next time. We'll have more for you. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank thanks you. Again, You're welcome. Thanks.